Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Graham. How nice are you? To, nice to meet you. I'm good, thank you. Good, 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 yeah. good. I was saying to you while the record's on, you know, 11 years, yeah. people wait for it. And you kind of think, I wonder where they are now. What's this going to be? You know, is it going to be very introspective and maybe a bit gloomy? But it's so not. It's so up. It's got the brass. It's got everything you want from Dexys. Uh, nice. That's good to know. We, we, well, it's one of the reasons we chose that one. It's kind of reminiscent of some of the older stuff, but... A modern version of it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I guess the question will always be, you know, it's not like an anniversary. It's like it's a 11 years. It's quite a random number of years. Mm. Uh, what, what decided to get you all back in the studio now to do an album? I don't know. It was just um, we after the we did a after the last album, I think I just felt I needed a break and um, I just kind of lost a bit of vitality. So I just wanted to work on myself a bit and I just really didn't feel like doing music and i knew if i did it would be a real trudge so i just didn't do much just you know looked after myself and then about 2020 21 i just thought hmm, i quite like to do music now again and uh first thing i did was phone up jim long time songwriting partner and yeah. see what we got looked at some stuff and that was one of them that we started some time ago but never really finished and um i don't know this one just flowed you know and tell me, I know you, so you had a bad crash, a bad motorcycle crash. Did that influence the, the, the decision to get back into the studio and, and create again? It maybe did subconsciously because I was kind of laid up for about six months with my leg up in the air. So um, it probably did make me think a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where, where was it? Where did it happen? In Thailand. It was oh, during okay. the rainy season. I was just trying to do a turn in the mud and then... I don't know what happened. I lost control. The bike went up in the air and just landed on my leg. And it, yeah, it was, yeah. It was wow, well, you're things. healing hearty now. You'd no, never no, know. No, good, good. Yeah. yeah all and, good. and the leg's all good. And for... Yeah, yeah, almost, <laughs> almost, almost, you know. Well, it better, It'll be, do. It better be good because uh, Dexys, are, you're back on the road. You're going Absolutely. to be performing these things live. When's that all kicking off? We start off? on the 4th of September in York and then we do loads of Liverpool, London, loads of big cities yeah. all around. And... When you say, you know, The Feminine Divine, and it's yeah. about, it, it's kind of about the uh, uh, that journey into discovering the femininity and all that sort of stuff. Is that something that just comes from you or are you sharing that experience with the other members of the band? It, it mostly comes from me. You know, it comes from me. And I remember when, I, when we first went to do a couple of vocals, I went around Mike's place and, um, and I can't remember, but it was one of them that was a little bit, you know, different and um so he's saying get a sound on the vocal and he hadn't heard any of the lyrics and i'm just sort of going, mm, so humming along mm, and then i just thought i well, better get the lyrics out and so when we actually did it I, I said it's a little bit out there and he went yeah it's not not that out there so yeah it's about my own uh as my own femininity and recognizing others femininity yeah all of that because now is a kind of a great time to be able to explore that because lots of people are talking about it and it's kind of do you kind of think oh i wish i'd realized this about myself earlier i mean it's been a journey with me i mean i did i did recognize it about myself we did an album called my beauty in 99 i wore a dress on the front cover of that um so but it's been a it's been a journey and the album kind of tells a story in, in some ways my story it's like the first song is like i'm really it's pretending to be macho and just like pretending to be this tough guy. And the second song, he says, well, that's not really how I, how I am. And then the, he, then he kind of evaluates things over the next couple of songs. And then in the fifth song, Feminine Divine, he looks at his relationship with women. Then he gets into a relationship in a different way. And then that plays out the rest of the album. So it's got a narrative. And, and the little spoken bits, are yeah. they literally captured in the studio or were they kind of scripted and you knew what was going to be in or did you oh they were scripted yeah okay but um but i i yeah i knew what they were going to be but it was about getting them getting the right it's like a bit like acting trying to get the right emotion you know yeah, yeah. and you know you've got the new music and obviously you've got a big back cat <laughs> big get back catalog. yeah uh do what's it like when you get back on the road when when did you last do live gigs 2012, 2013. Wow, so years. it is a big old gap. It's a big old gap. Have you done a rehearsal yet? <laughs> oh god, well not all together, <laughs> but I've been uh, I've been working on my vocals. I've been talking to everybody about the arrangements, and then I think it's August the fourth or something like that. We all go in the studio together, yeah, and start rehearsing. We've got a month, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we're we're kind of prepared already. And what do you bring with you? Do you bring any brass, or is that all on? Uh, no, we brass, we brass, and, we brass yeah. and strings live. Yeah, yeah. That'll be amazing. Well, you, I, I hope so. You must be looking forward to it. Sometimes. And sometimes, <laughs> no, you know, nervous. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess 
Yes, if you were looking forward to it, you might have done it before 2012. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to do it with a new album. I didn't want to just do a load of shows and just focus on the old stuff only, you know. Um, so the first half of the show is going to be the whole new album, and we're going to act it out because it's a drama. We're going to perform it theatrically. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, as well as play it. Yeah, so it's a lot going on. There's a lot of ideas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, Kevin, that sounds brilliant. Yeah, well, I hope so. And then, yeah. then there's an interval, and then we come back and do the old stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. I think that's such a great... I, I went to see... Um, uh, oh, oh, Walk Onto Ladders. Um, Joan Arbitrating. Yeah. And she said that. She came out and kind of went, I'm going to be my own support. I'm going to play my entire new album. Yeah. And we kind of laughed. We thought, oh, yeah. she's joking. Oh, no, wow. she played her whole <laughs> new album. And it was great because, actually, loads of people go to hear mm-hmm. the old stuff yeah. and you know they mightn't you know, they mightn't be buying Feminine Divine so it's great that they get to hear it and they get well, to they experience it well they're going to hear it and also hopefully there's something to watch we're not just standing there playing our instruments there's a drama so Claudia Choprek who's going to be the female protagonist uh, in the show she's coming over from New York so there's going to be a there's, it's a drama to watch as well as listen and uh, this album so you sat down and you wrote Lots of songs for it, but some of the songs you kind of had. Am I right? In a kind of yeah, in a drawer yeah. somewhere. Yeah, coming home. We'd written a version of ages ago, but never quite finished it. The first two or three songs on the album, um, so they kind of got an older viewpoint, and then uh, the newer songs seem to stretch into the second part of the story. And what's, what's that like when you kind of, I don't know how you do it, well, if you metaphorically open a drawer and yeah. <laughs> find a song you wrote kind of 20 years ago, yeah. uh, what's it like revisiting it? I mean, it's great because I, 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 I'm a really slow writer anyway and I use I, I do rewrites and I love to have a bit of time. You know, I, I often come back to stuff a few months later and, ah, oh, that's not right. I, can, I need the benefit of time to really see. So 10, 20 years, I've got loads of benefit and I can just go, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right, that's wrong, keep that bit, lose that bit. Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. And what's it like with when? Because in these eleven years, do you guys stay in touch, or is it very much kind of like we're living our own lives, and I'll see you when I see you? Well, we we do stay in touch. Um, and what happened is at the end of whatever it was, twenty thirteen, twenty four, whatever, I took everybody for a meal and just said, "Look, guys, I've, I'm, I need a break. We're gonna, you know, keep in touch, but let's, you know." And we did. We kept in touch, and then about. Three or four. We, we always kept in touch. About three or four years ago, I said, "Listen, I'm I'm ready to do something," and uh, everybody was like, "Great, well, we got some ideas," and off we went. And has it ever? Have you ever broke up? No, you never did that. I mean, we did. We did in the eighties. You know, we, we didn't we, tell anyone. Well, we, you know, <laughs> as about half the band left at one point, and um, yeah, you know, oh yeah, we broke up a couple of times. But it just seems. When I look back now, it just seems for the best, you know. At the time, oh no, what am I going to do? He's left, she's left, whatever. But it just seemed, you know, that we kind of it and actually run its course, and then well, we'll get some new guys in, and it kind of brought us new energy. And with each album, we tried to take a new direction, so it kind of worked. Yeah, but looking at how and what's it like when you do the second half of the show and you're yeah. doing the older tracks? Yeah, uh, what does it feel like being Kevin Rowland, twenty twenty three, doing those songs? Now, do you recognise the Kevin Rowland from back then who wrote those songs? And I sort of do. I sort of do recognise the person, but I even make um, I even make reference. But I'm a completely different person, as I'm sure we all are. Yeah, you know. But um, I even make reference to that. There's like a song called "Until I Believe in My Soul," and I, there's this passage where I literally used to go, "I'm going to punish on stage. I'm going to punish my body to believe in my soul." And I used to do this thing like James Brown, bounce down on my knees, jump up on my feet bounced down on my knees jump on me it was madness but that's what I did I was a good Catholic boy you know and um, that's what I did and now I say uh, and when I when we used to do this back in the 80s I, I used to punish my body to believe in my soul and I, and I always make some comment about how incredible that was that I actually did it yeah but that's how I do it yeah, well, now, post-motorcycle crash, that is not happening. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and one of the things, uh, uh, an enormous thing in your life, I guess, was sobriety. And what is that, yeah. now, 30 years of sobriety? 29, coming up 30. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm and, blessed, yeah. And is that part of this journey, the feminine divine journey? Oh, totally, totally. Because when I got into recovery from cocaine addiction, which is, as I said, nearly, 20, nearly 30 years ago, um, I had to kind of look at everything not just the addiction, but my whole life, my whole outlook towards everything. And over a period of time, in small increments, I started to see, man, that was really screwed up. That was really messed up. 
and uh, it just opened me up to my own femininity, to all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, it's massive. And a big change in your life like that. I always feel like if if you've had your success, particularly creatively, like writing songs, and you yeah. know you're a bit out of your head, yeah. were you scared what would sober Kevin? be like as a creative artist or as a performer yeah yeah totally because I didn't have any crutches to fall back on um totally and it took a long time it was about seven or eight years before I before I did any music I just sort of worked on myself up to that point um and went very slowly I was scared yeah um and I almost wished I didn't have a past at that time because I just wanted to do something new and everybody's gone, oh, yeah, but it's not like your old stuff. And I go, no, because I feel like a new person now. <laughs> but it's, but I think what's interesting is yeah. with this album, yeah. it's like you have kind of come full circle. Because yeah. these sound like if if you played this album, people yeah. would go, is that Dexys? Yeah. You know, they, they'd okay. get it. OK. Oh, well, Don't you good. think? Yeah, I think a lot of it, a lot of it they would. Some of the tra- later tracks on the album, they wouldn't. Um, yeah. But but some of them they would, for sure. And I'm, I'm pleased about that. But it's in a modern way, hopefully. Yeah. But also, yeah. I think it's a really... Like I say, because you, you kind of think if something's been away for 11 years, yeah. what will it sound like? And I think what's great is it's it's so positive and it's so up. I mean, you must be pleased with you must be pleased with the energy of this album. Oh, it doesn't totally. it doesn't sound like some old men singing a song. No, totally, totally. No, I wanted it to be that. We were feeling positive, and it's about a journey and it's into positivity, and I wanted it to reflect that. And I've always liked records like. The Beach Boys and, and tracks that sound good in the summer, you know, really positive stuff. So I've always wanted us to sound like that, really. Joe, it's so funny you say that because when because you know, my memory of you guys sure. was my very first Lon- London summer, which I think was eighty two. Eighty two, and uh, yeah, Riley? and it was nothing but you. It wow. was just that was the absolute. It wasn't even like just part of the soundtrack. It was the. It seemed like the only song that summer. It wow. must have been so weird to be in the middle of it. That was it was great, you know. But um, and I'm glad that it was that. It, we got them songs that sound good in the summer because they were always my favourites, you know? Yeah. Songs that kind of capture the summer in a way. Well, I'd like you to leave the studio and find the summer again. Because, I'll do my <laughs> because, best. I'll do my best. it seems to have disappeared. Oh. Uh, Kevin Rowland, so lovely Thank to you. talk Thank to you. Thank you so much.